Hello my friends and welcome to my year two literature degree. So last year I decided that I, while I minored in English in university, I did not really get an education. And so I wanted to create a fake literature degree for myself. And so I did a bunch of research, I looked things up, and I made myself a little bit of an outline that I can take each year to create a, another year for myself. Now, I will kind of summarize exactly what it is that I came up with, but if you want even more details, I explain all about the literature degree in my last year's video, which I'll leave linked. But basically, what I've decided to do is to read books from a certain time period, read books in a specialty of some sort, and to read books by a particular author. So those are like my three main headings. Last year I chose the Victorian era, Golden Age Detective novels, and C.S. Lewis. It was not the best year. I probably would fail myself in my literature degree, but we had a lot going on in our home, moving, lots of stuff happening, so that's okay. The nice thing is this is a DIY literature degree. I can choose any of those three areas and study them again in upcoming years, so there's not a lot of pressure here. I'm also planning on, or am currently making myself a little bit of a curriculum for other areas as well. I've shared it a little bit over on my vlog channel. Um, I wanna do some art stuff and some other learning and education history stuff. It's, it's not quite so solidified yet, but I'm working on it. So this year, I decided to pick my time period, my specialty, and my author based on the books I have available to me, the ones I already own, uh, because I'm really, really trying to lower my physical TBR, books that I own that I have not read. And so that is really why I've chosen what I've chosen this year. There are a lot of books here. I'm curious to know how many I can read. I really want to push myself to do really well with this this year and check a lot of these boxes. At the same time, I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure. I'm a rebel. Sometimes it's hard for me to convince myself to do things. But we are gonna get into this. I, once again, same as last year, I use Notion and I set up a like checklist for myself for all these different things, books that I wanna read, etc. Yeah, because there's a lot here. So let's get into it. So the period I've decided to study for this year, the one that I had the most of, is the 20th century, but I'm gonna go from 1900 until 1975-ish. There's a little bit of wiggle room, some of them I'll explain why a little bit of wiggle room. Um, so the first, not the first, but like the first thing on my list is just a bunch of novels that take place during that time. So I'm gonna tell you what I own and um, there will be more. I would love to hear your suggestions if you have some suggestions for this time period. My priority is definitely gonna be the books I own. Uh, but maybe you will tell me something that is like, oh yeah, I've always wanted to read that book and I don't own it, so I'll keep my eye out for it. Uh, the first one I have here is Sun Sunshine Sketches of a Little Town. This is by Stephen Leacock. This is almost the one and only book in university that I read that I really enjoyed. I think this is Canadian. Uh, I think it's a Canadian author and they are little sketches of little towns where something happened and it just blows out of proportion as things do in a little town. I really enjoyed it and I'm curious to know if I enjoy it on my reread and I got this vintage copy I think at a thrift store a while ago. I was very excited to find it because it's not a very popular book but it was pretty hilarious from what I remember. So there's that one. Then the only Ray Bradbury that I own is the Martian Chronicles. I don't know anything about this at all. I would really like to read Fahrenheit 451 by him. I've kept my eye out for it at thrift stores and used bookstores for a while and haven't come across it. So we'll see if I add that one to the list or not, but I own the Martian Chronicles. We've got F. Scott Fitzgerald, The Great Gatsby. Um, a lot of these I feel like are American literature that I hear a lot of people had to read in 
high school that as a Canadian we weren't forced to read and I just want to know what they're about. I honestly know nothing about this but I'm kind of obsessed with these orange penguin books so even if I don't like it I'm going to keep it because I like how the cover looks. We've got a Virginia Woolf to the lighthouse. Now I've read one Virginia Woolf so far, didn't really enjoy it uh, but I've heard good things about to the lighthouse so we'll see. Joseph Heller Catch-22, another one that I feel like I really should read. This copy is in perfect condition as well and is a nice cool vintage The Everyman's Library edition. Um, so got that one. Also know nothing about it. We've got a John Stein back on here. I have East of Eden. I honestly never really paid attention to how big this book is but it's a lot bigger than I expected or thought it would be. Um, yeah, so I think this is one of the ones where I don't hear the greatest things about it, but I would like to know what it's about. Next up is J.D. Salinger's The Catcher in the Rye, another one that I hear everyone has to read all the time that I know nothing about. Okay, one I don't own. Um, I wanted to throw a Daphne du Maurier on here, but I've read her most popular ones. I think her next most popular one I haven't read is Jamaica Inn. So I'm hoping to get that one from the library or keep my eye out for it um, before it comes time to read that. Uh, oh, I forgot to grab one. Yes, there's one still on my shelf. Elizabeth Googe just makes the cutoff. I have The Child from the Sea. I think this was 1970s something 1970 so I want to read this one by her don't know anything about it as well and then I have I'm pretty sure I own another one by her um the castle on the hill but I couldn't find it at the moment it's I know I own it in mass market paperback and so it might just be tucked away somewhere so I have both of those on my list I'm gonna say I'm probably not gonna get to all of these but I'm gonna try we'll see one that I own on ebook is the enchanted april by Elizabeth Vaughn Arnhem. Uh, this is one that I didn't get to in April and I feel like I have to read it in April. I don't really know anything about it. Once again, kind of a theme here. So we'll see if I can do that next April. And then I've got The Christmas Mouse by Miss Reed or I don't know if Miss Reed is the series or if Miss Reed is the author. It's a cute little vintage book, very short gonna try to read this at Christmas time and then the golden age of detective fiction a lot of that would fit in here as well because that was my specialty last year which I totally failed at and didn't read much of I'm not officially putting anything on this list but if I could get through these first because I'd like to prioritize these then maybe I'll throw some of those in there as well um, so that is what I have for full-length novels during that time period then this is a handy dandy but super heavy book. This is the Norton Anthology English Literature, uh, The Major Authors. So this is a massive book that goes from, when does it start? The Middle Ages up until the 20th century. So we've got short stories and plays and poems all in here. So I went through and I made a list of short stories and some poets from here that I would like to read. So for short stories, they've got Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness, which I don't know if I read before, but I'm gonna give it another try. There is a few different short stories by D.H. Lawrence in here as well. I've never heard of Catherine Mansfield, but there's The Garden Party, and there's some other ones that I may include as well. And then for poetry, interestingly, Thomas Hardy is put in the 20th century in this book, not in the Victorian era. I think he kind of wrote, it overlaps a little bit. So I read some of his poetry during my Victorian era study, um, but I might read a little bit more from here if there's some that I haven't read. Then there's also William Butler Yeats. I made a list on my list on Notion because these are the ones I'm gonna prioritize, but I might get to some other ones. W.H. Uh, Auden and T.S. Eliot are all in here as well as some others that I haven't really heard of before. So I have this beast to help with that. Oh, that's a heavy one to hold. And then I have some nonfiction. Where? Oh, that's this stack. I have so many stacks of books here. I have some nonfiction from this era as well. 
And this is where some things, they're published a little bit after 1975, but the people and the events took place between 1900 and 1975, so I'm gonna count them. Um, actually, I had a decent amount of nonfiction just on my shelves here. So, first one we'll start with is George Orwell, Down and Out in Paris and London. I didn't put any of his fiction on my list because I've read Animal Farm, I've read 1984. I don't really like George Orwell, but nonfiction, I thought I would give a try. Then I have Daphne du Maurier's Myself When Young, The Shaping of a Writer. So I don't know how much of this is gonna be like full on memoir or how much is specifically about writing, um, but I thought that's cool. Also, she looks, okay, let's focus. So her young self, like, you can 100% tell that is the same person. That's so cool. No idea what this is gonna be like because she writes so gothic. It'll be interesting to read nonfiction by her. Next on my list, I have two Agatha Christie. So I have an autobiography. I actually own this in two different editions and I don't think this is the edition I'm gonna read it from because it's um, harder to read, but also has a cool, cool cover. Um, a book I don't own though that I might grab is um, Lucy Worsley, who I really enjoyed her Queen Victoria biography. She has one on Agatha Christie that I might get from the library or purchase or something because she did so well with that Victoria one. And then I also have Agatha Christie Mallowin's Come Tell Me How You Live. And this is an archeological memoir. Why do we keep not focusing? Um, so her second husband, right? I'm pretty sure. Is this her second husband or is this the first one that was terrible? Anyway, they go on a bunch of archeological digs and this really plays into a lot of her writing. She sets a lot of her writing in the Middle East because of this, so I think that'd be interesting. What else do I have on my list? I have The Letters of Nancy Mitford. I don't really know who Nancy Mitford is. is. Uh, she apparently was a novelist, a biographer, and journalist. She was born in 1904 to a family that seemed always to be in Britain's headlines and not only on the society pages. So she was the eldest of Lord and Lady Reddesdale's seven talented children. Writer Jessica Mitford among them. So she, she was a writer, but this is her letters. And I'm kind of obsessed with letters. I think that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna give this a try. Maybe also see what she wrote and see if I can get my hands on some of that because the letters would probably be more meaningful if I actually knew some of the background. But I found this at a library sale quite a while ago. And then the last one I have for nonfiction during this time is Shirley Jackson, uh, Life Among the Savages. I think I have another one of her nonfiction books somewhere too. There might be a short story collection on my shelf. Um, so I've enjoyed some of Shirley Jackson's stuff, some of it not so much, but this is America's celebrated master of terror turns to a different kind of fright raising children. So this is her time as a parent. I don't know. I think it could be funny. We'll see. So that's a lot of books and that is just my books for the 20th century classics section. Then we're going to go into my specialty for the year, which is now what the stack of, or what my computer is on here. Um, I really wanted to do children's picture books because it all started because I own this one book that I've been waiting to use in a DIY literature degree. And then I realized I've read a lot of classic children's picture books and there wasn't a ton written earlier. So I'm mostly leaving this as children's literature. So there is a bunch of novels on here as well. It's, it's a little bit of a hodgepodge. Um, so the first one, the one that inspired it all, is Frances Hodgson Burnett's The Rackety Packety House. And this is, this was written 1901 or really early 1900s. I don't really know what it's about. If you believe in fairies and if your dolls have adventures when you leave the room, then Frances Hodgson Burnett has written a book for you. Uh, yeah, so this inspired the whole thing. And then I was like, well, I do have other children's literature that I have not read yet. Uh, quite a bit, quite a bit. The Green Fairy Book, I got this a long time ago, and these are fairy tales uh, edited by Andrew Lang. He has a ton. They're all different color books, so there's like the Blue Fairy Book, the Red Fairy Book, etc. 
This is the only one that I've had the privilege of coming across in a thrift store, so I would like to read the stories. I don't know if this has any stories that I'm like I've heard of before. It starts out with the bluebird, the half chick, the enchanted watch. I, I have no idea. They don't really sound familiar, but we will see. So I have that. Then I've looked up a few. There's a couple options on Project Gutenberg that I might read as well. Uh, but for what I own here, I didn't really write these all down. Um, obviously Beatrix Potter is a big one, but I've read a lot of those via my children, reading them to my children. So here's what I have in front of me. The Betsy Tacy Treasury. I was really hoping to get to this book or these are, this is three book, four books um, this year. The font is huge, so maybe I can. Um, but this is two friends. Lots of children on Hill Street, but no little girls Betsy's age. So when a new family moves into the house across the street, Betsy hopes they will have a little girl. Sure enough, the moment Betsy meets Tacy, one of the most heartfelt friendships in all of children's literature begins. So this is mentioned in You've Got Mail. Which leads me to my next one, which is Dancing Shoes by Noel Stretfield. I've read Ballet Shoes and I've read Skating Shoes. So time for me to read Dancing Shoes. If Kathleen Kelly recommends a book or mentions a book, I want to read it. Uh, I also have Five Little Peppers by Margaret Sidney. I don't know anything about it. Oh, it has illustrations. Cute. Um, because, you know, I've got no information here, but it's on my stack as well and then i could do the next what katie did um the next one is what katie did next this is number three in the series by this point she is quite old she's um going i think she travels europe in this book which sounds fun um another francis hodgson burnett the lost prince this one is one of her few that i have not read and it's quite thick I don't know if this one has illustrations. Doesn't look like it. So I don't know anything about it, but it's on my stack. Then I've got Hans Christian Andersen, The Complete Fairy Tales. Um, obviously I would have read some of these in different variations, but I would like, I think it'd be good to read them all. And then in addition, I own a copy of The Grimm's Fairy Tales. Another one I would like to work my way through. Probably these will take longer than just the year, but something to get started with at least and i think oh and then i also wrote raggedy ann down i did read i think it's a series i know i read a bit of it or a bit of one or some to my oldest when she was like five or six so it's been a long time um i'll see how i can get my hands on a copy okay and then the last thing is my literary mentor so last year i chose c.s lewis and i could keep going with him because I didn't even read very much or slash I own a lot of his books so I have more to read but I've decided to go with an author that I have three books by um, a mix of fiction and nonfiction, and that is G.K. Chesterton. So my one nonfiction that I have by him is Orthodoxy, the beloved Christian masterpiece. Um, this is a book that I've wanted to read for a very long time and it is his account of his own journey to faith. It sounds interesting. I, yeah, like I said, I've wanted to read it for a long time. So I have that. Um, on my Kindle, I know I have, what's it called? Man Alive. I heard about it decently recently, don't remember anything. So there's that one as well. Then I have Father Brown, The Essential Tales. I have read part of it, part of it a number of the stories. I would like to finish these short stories about Father Brown, he is a Roman Catholic priest that solves mysteries. And then there is The Man Who Was Thursday. This is a nightmare. What is with this camera not focusing? Uh, so this is a psychological thriller from, when was this one published? Um, why does it never say? I don't care when this edition was published. Well, he died in 1936, so it was written before that. And I'm very curious about a psychological thriller pre-1936. Sounds fascinating. So I only have four books to read from him. And one of them I've almost, I'm like a third of the way through. I would like to believe that I could actually read all of those. Um, the other areas 
I'm not kidding myself into thinking I'm going to actually finish them, but hopefully I can make a good dent in it this year. So if you guys did a DIY literature degree last year based off of like my recommendations, let me know how you did. If you're doing another one, what are you guys studying? Your ideas are very helpful for the future. I think I already know which time period I'm gonna do next year. We'll see, that might change, that's a whole year away. But this year I really wanted to focus on the books that were on my shelf. So let me know if you have book suggestions for me for my different areas and what you guys plan on reading. Thanks for being here.